August's house. It was already the middle of January and we still hadn't even chosen a science fair project we were going to work on. I guess I kept putting it off because I just didn't want to do it. Finally, August was like, dude, we have to do this. So we went to his house after school. I was really nervous because I didn't know if August had ever told his parents about what we had now called the Halloween incident. Turns out the dad wasn't even home and mom was out running errands. I'm pretty sure from the two seconds I'd spent talking that, to her that Augie had never mentioned a thing about it. She was super cool and friendly towards me. When I first walked into Augie's room, I was like, whoa, Augie, you've got a serious Star Wars addiction. He has a ledge full of Star Wars miniatures and a huge Empire Strikes Back poster as well. I know, right? He laughed. He sat down rolling a chair next to his desk and I plopped down the beanbag in the corner. That's when his dog waddled into the room right up to me. He was on our, uh, he was on our holiday card, I said, letting the dog sniff my hand. She, he corrected me. Daisy, you can pet her. She doesn't bite. When I started petting her, she basically just rolled on her back. She wants you to rub her tummy, said August. Okay, this is the cutest dog I've ever seen, I said, rubbing her stomach. I know, right? She's the best dog in the world, aren't you, girly? As soon as she heard Augie's voice that um, say that, the dog started wagging her tail and went over to him. Who's my little girly? Who's my little girly? Augie was saying as she licked him all over the face. I wish I had a dog, I said. My parents think our apartment's too small. I started looking around at the stuff in his room while he turned on the computer. Hey, you've got an Xbox 360. Can we play? Dude, we're here to work on our science fair project. Do you have Halo? Of course I have Halo. Please, can we play? He logged onto the Beecher website and was now scrolling down Mrs. Rubin's, um, Mrs. Rubin's teacher page through the list of science fair projects. Can you see from there, he said. I sighed and went to sit on the little stool that was next to him. Cool iMac, I said. What kind of computer do you have? Dude, I don't even have my own room, much less my own computer. My parents have this ancient Dell that's practically dead. Okay, how about this one, he said, turning the screen in my direction so I would look. I made a quick scan of the screen and my eyes literally started blurring. Making a sun clock, he said. That sounds kind of cool. I learned that, uh, I leaned back. Can't we do like making a volcano? Everyone makes volcanoes. Duh, because it's easy. I said, petting Daisy again. What about how we make crystal, uh, crystal spikes out of Eb Epsom salts? Sounds boring, I answered. Why did you call her Daisy? He didn't look up from my screen. My sister named her. I wanted to call her Darth. Actually, technically speaking, her full name is Darth Daisy, but we never really call her that. Darth Daisy? That's funny. Hi, Darth Daisy, I said to the dog, who rolled onto her back again for me to rub her tummy. Okay, this one is the one, said August, pointing to the picture on the screen of a bunch of potatoes with wires poking at them. How to build an organic battery made of potatoes. Now that's cool. It says here you could power a lamp with it. We could call it spud lamp or something. What do you think? Dude, that sounds way too hard. You know I suck at science. Uh, be quiet, you do not. Yeah, I do. I got 54 on my last test. I suck at science. No, you don't. And that was only one because we were fighting and I wasn't helping you. I can help you now. This is a good project, Jack. We've got to do it. Fine, whatever, I shrugged. Just then there was a knock at the door. A teenage girl with long, dark, wavy hair poked her head inside. She wasn't expecting to see me. Oh, hey, she said to both of us. Hey, Via, said August, looking back at his computer screen. Via, this is Jack. Jack, this is Via. Hey, I nodded, saying hello. Hey, she said, looking at me carefully. I knew the second Augie said my name that he had told her about the stuff I had said about him. I could tell from the way she looked at me. In fact, the way she looked at me made me think she remembered me from the day at the carna carnival at Amforce Avenue all those years ago. Augie, I have a friend um, I want you to meet, okay, she said. He's coming over in a few minutes. Is he your boyfriend, August teased? Via kicked the bottom of his chair. Just be nice, she said, and left the room. Dude, your sister is hot, I said. I know. She hates me, right? You told her about the Halloween incident? Yeah. Yeah, she hates me, or yeah, you told her about the Halloween incident. Both. The boyfriend. Two minutes later, the sister came back with a guy named Justin. Seemed like a cool enough dude. Longish hair, little round glasses. He was carrying a big, long, shiny silver case that ended up in a sharp point of one end. Justin, this is my little brother, August, said Via, and that's Jack. Hey, guys, said Justin, shaking our hands. He seemed a little nervous. I guess maybe because he was meeting August for the first time. Sometimes I forget what shock it is when you first meet him. Cool room. Are you Via's boyfriend, Augie asked mischievously, and his sister pulled his cape pulled his cape down over his, uh, or cap down over his face. What's within the case, I said, a machine gun? Ha, <laughs> answered the boyfriend. That's funny. No, it's a fiddle. Justin's a fiddler, said Bia. 
He's in the um, Zukado band. What the heck is a Zukado band? said Augie, looking at me. It's a type of music, said Justin. It's like Creole music. What's Creole, I said. You should, you should tell people that it's a machine gun, said Augie. Nobody would ever mess with you. Ha ha, I guess you're right, said Justin, nodding and tucking his hair behind his ears. Creole is the kind of music they play in Louisiana, he said to me. Are you from Louisiana, I asked. No, um, he answered, pushing up his golf, says, I'm from Brooklyn. I don't know why this made me want to laugh. Come on, Justin, said Via, um, pulling him by the hand. Let's go hang out in my room. Okay, guys, see you later. Bye, he said. Bye, bye, bye. As soon as the room, uh, they left the room, Augie looked at me smiling. I'm from Brooklyn, I said, and we both started laughing hysterically. Justin, sometimes I think my head is so big because it's so full of dreams. John Merrick and Bernard uh, Promise, Promise, the elephant man. Olivia's brother. The first time I met Olivia's brother, I have to admit, I was totally taken um, by surprise. I shouldn't be, of course. Olivia told me about his syndrome. Um, he has has even described what he looks like, but she has also talked about all the surgeries over the years, so I guess I assumed he'd be more normal looking by now. Like when a kid is born with a cleft palate, they have um, plastic surgery to fix it sometimes, and, um, and you can't even tell except for a little scar above the lip. I guess I thought her brother would have some scars here and there, but not this. I definitely wasn't expecting to see this kid in a cap, baseball cap, who's sitting in front of me right now. Actually, there are two kids sitting in front of me. One is totally normal looking with um, looking kid with curly brown hair named Jack. The other one is Augie. I like to think I'm able to hide my surprise. I hope I do. Surprise is one of the emotions that I can't, that can be hard to fake though. Whether you're trying to look surprised when you're not trying, when you're not, or trying to look surprised when you are. I shake his hand. I shake the other kid's hand. Don't want to focus on his face. Cool room, I say. Are you Via's boyfriend, he says. I think he's smiling. Olivia pushes down his baseball cap. Is that a machine gun, the blonde kid asks? Like, I haven't heard that one before. And we talk about Zuduko music, Zuduko for a bit. Then Via is taking my hand and leading me out of the room. As soon as we close the door behind us, we hear them laughing. I'm from Brooklyn, the one of them sings. Olivia rolls her eyes as she smiles. Let's go hang out in my room, she says. We've been dating for two months now. I knew from the moment I saw her, the minute she sat down at our table in the cafeteria, that I liked her. I couldn't keep my eyes off her, really beautiful, with olive skin and the bluest eyes I've ever seen in my life. At first, she acted like she only wanted to be friends. I think she kind of gives off that vibe without even meaning to. Uh, stay back, don't even bother. She doesn't flirt like some of the other girls. She looks uh, you right in the eye when, she's, um, when she talks to you, like she's daring you. So I just kept looking right at her, too, like I was daring her right back. And then I asked her out and she said, yes, but dropped. She's an awesome girl and I love hanging out with her. She didn't tell me about August until our third date. I think she used the phrase, a cranial official ad admirality to describe his face. Or maybe it was cran official anomaly. I know one of the words she didn't use was deformed. Though, because of that word would have registered with me. So what did, I th what did you think? She said, she asked me nervously the second we were inside her room. Are you shocked? No, I lied. She smiled and looked away. You're shocked. I'm not, I assure her. He's just like what you said he'd be. She nods and plops down on her bed. Kind of cute how she still has a lot of stuffed animals on her bed. She takes one of them off, a polar bear without thinking, and puts it in her lap. I sit down on the rolling chair by her desk. Her room is immaculate. When I was little, she says, there was a lots of kids who never came back from a second play date. I mean, lots of kids. I even had friends who wouldn't come to my birthday because he would be there. They never actually told me this, but I would get, it would get back to me. Some people just don't know how to deal with Augie, you know? I nod. It's not even like they, uh, they know they're being mean, she adds. They're just scared. I mean, let's face it. His face is a little scary, right? I guess I answer. But you're okay with it, she asked me sweetly. You're not too freaked out or scared. I'm not freaked out or scared, I smiled. She nods and looks down at the polar bear in her lap. I can't tell whether she believes me or not, but then she gives the polar bear a kiss on the nose and tosses it at me with a little smile. I think that means she believes me, or at least wants to. Valentine's Day. I give Olivia a heart necklace on Valentine's Day, and she gives me a, mess a messenger bag she made out of old floppy disks. Very cool how she makes things like that. Earrings um, out of pieces of circuit board, dresses out of t-shirts, 
bags out of old jeans. She's creative. I tell her she should be an artist someday, but she wants to be a scientist, a geneticist of all things. She wants to find a cure for people like her brother, I guess. We make plans for me to finally meet her parents, a, a Mexican, Mexican restaurant on Amforce near her house Saturday, on Saturday night. All day long, I'm nervous about it. And when I get nervous, my, tick come, my ticks come out. I mean, my ticks are always there, but they're not like they used to be when I was little. Nothing but a few hard blinks and the occasional head pull. But when I'm stressed, they get worse and I'm definitely stressing about meeting her folks. They're waiting inside when I get to the restaurant. My dad gets up and shakes my hand. The dad gets up and shakes my hand and the mom gives me a hug. I give Augie a hello and a fist, pun uh, fist punch and kiss Olivia on the cheek before I sit down. It's so nice to meet you, Justin. We've heard so much about you. Her parents couldn't be nicer. Put me at ease right away. The waiter brings over our menus and I notice the expression the moment he lays eyes on August. But I pretend not to notice. I guess we're all pretending not to notice things tonight. The waiter, my ticks, the way August crushes the tortilla chips on the table and spoons the crumbs into his mouth. I look at Olivia and she smiles at me. She knows, she sees the waiter's face. She sees my ticks. Olivia is the girl who sees everything. We spend the entire dinner talking and laughing. Olivia's parents ask me about my music, how I got into the, fiddle, into the fiddle and stuff like that. And I tell them about how I used to play classical violin, but I got too into Appalachian folk music and Zidiko, and they're listening to every word like they're really interested. They tell me to let them know the next time my band plays playing a gig so they can come and listen. I'm not used to all this attention to be truthful. My parents don't have a clue about what I want to do with my life. They never ask, we never talk about this. I don't think they even know I traded my Baroque violin um, for an eight string hard, hard dang, danger fiddle two years ago. After dinner, we go back to Olivia's from some ice cream. Their dog greets us at the door. An old dog, super sweet. She thrown up in the hall, up all over the hallway though. Olivia's mom rushes to get paper towels while the dad picks up the dog like she's a baby. What's up old girly, he says, and the dog in heaven, tongue hanging out, tail wagging, legs, in the air at an awkward angle. Dad tells Justin how you got, Dad, tell Justin how you got Daisy, says Olivia. Yeah, says Augie. The dad smiles and sits down in the chair with the dog still cradled in his arms. It's obvious he's told the story a lot of times and they all love to hear it. So I'm coming home from the subway one day, he says, and a homeless guy I've never seen in the neighborhood before is pushing a floppy mutt in a stroller and comes up to me and says, hey, mister, wanna buy my dog? And without even thinking about it, um, Without even thinking about it, I say, sure, how much? And he says, 10 bucks. So I give him $20 and I have in my wallet and he hands me the dog. Justin, I'm telling you, you've never smelled anything so bad in your life. She stank so much, I can't even tell you. So I took her right from there to the vet down the street and then I brought her home. Didn't even call me first, by the way, the mom interjects as she cleans the floor to see if I'm okay with um, his, to see if I'm okay with his bringing home some of the home, someone's home, some homeless guy's dog. The dog actually looks over at the mom when she says this, like uh, she understands everything everyone's saying about her. She's a happy dog. She likes, um, like she knows she left out the day she found, the day finding this family. I kind of know how she feels. It's like Olivia's family. They laugh, a, I like Olivia's family, they laugh a lot. My family's not like that much. My mom and dad got divorced when I was four and they pretty much hate each other. I grew up spending half of every week in my dad's apartment in Chelsea and the other half of my mom's place in Brooklyn Heights. I have a half brother who's five um, years older than me and barely knows I exist. For as long as I can remember, I felt like my parents could hardly wait for me to be old enough to take care of myself. You can go to the store by yourself. Here's the keys to the apartment. It's funny how their world, um, there's a world like overprotective to describe some parents, but no word that means the opposite. What, do, what word do you use to describe parents who don't protect enough? Underprotective, neglectful, self-involved, lame, all of the above. Olivia's family tell each other I love you all the time. I can't remember the last time anyone in my family has said that to me. By the time I go home, my ticks have all stopped. Our town. We're doing the play Our Town for the spring show this year. Olivia dares me to try out for the lead role, the, st uh, the stage manager, and somehow I, Olivia dares me to try out for the lead role, the stage manager, and somehow I get it. Total fluke, never got any lead roles in anything before. I tell Olivia she brings me good luck. 
Unfortunately, she doesn't get the female lead, Emily get Emily Gibbs. The pink haired girl named Miranda Miranda gets it. Olivia gets a bit um gets a gets a bit part and is also Emily's understudy. I'm actually more disappointed than Olivia is. She almost seems relieved. I don't love people staring at me, she says, which is sort of strange coming from such a pretty girl. A part of me thinks maybe she blew her audition on purpose. The spring show is at the end of April. It's mid-March now. So that's less than six weeks to memorize my part, plus rehearsal time, plus practicing with my band, plus finals, plus spending time with Olivia. It's going to be a rough six weeks, that's for sure. Mr. Davenport, the drama teacher, is already a maniac about the whole thing and will drive us crazy by the time it's over, no doubt. I heard through the grapevine that he's been planning on doing The Elephant Man, but changed it to our town at the last minute. And that change took weeks off our schedule rehearsal. Not looking forward to the craziness of the next month and a half. Ladybug. Olivia and I are sitting on her front stoop. She's helping me with my lines. It's warm March evening, almost like summer. Like sky, the, the sky is still bright see, uh, seeing, and the sun is low, and the sidewalks are streaked with long shadows. I'm reciting, yes, the sun comes up over a thousand times. Summers and uh, winters have cracked, cracked the mountains a little bit more, and the rains have brought down some dirt. Some babies that weren't even born before have begun taking or talking regular sentences already, and a number of people who thought they were right, um, were right young and spry, have noticed that they can't bound up the flight of stairs like they used to without their hearts fluttering a little. I shake my head. I can't remember the rest. All that can happen in a thousand days, Olivia prompts me, reading from the script. Right, 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 I say, shaking my head. I sigh. I'm white, Olivia. How the heck am I going to remember all these lines? You will, she answers confidently, and she reaches out and cups, my, cups her hand over the ladybug that appears out of, out of nowhere. See? A good luck sign, she says, slowly lifting her top hand to reveal the ladybug walking in the palm of her hand. Good luck or just the hot weather, I joke. Of course, good luck, she answers, watching the ladybug crawl up her wrist. There um, should be a thing about making a wish on a ladybug. Augie and I used to do that with fireflies when we were little. She cups her hands over the ladybug. Again, come on, make a wish. Close your eyes. I dutifully close my eyes. A long second pause, then I open them. Did you make a wish, she asks. Yep. She smiles and uncups her hands, and the, lady, and the ladybug, as if on cue, spreads its wings and flits away. Don't you want to know what I wish for, I ask. No, she answers slyly. Shyly, looking up at the sky, which is at that very moment, is the exact color of her eyes. I made a wish too, she said mysteriously, but she has so many things she could wish for, uh, she could wish for I have no idea what she's thinking.